righty. Good evening. Thank you for uh, patience. Took a couple minutes to do a couple little minor technical difficulties, so we're running a few minutes behind. Uh, nonetheless, uh, we begin our December regular meeting. Uh, so if we can start with a call to order now, uh, call it at 7.07. Uh, and if we can get a roll call, please. Yes. Diane Law. Here. Kevin Collins. Here. Matt Castilla. Here. Norma Greco. Here. <clears throat> Here. Adam McDowell. Here. Valerie Renthaler. Here. Jay Dorn. I'm still here. And of course, the mayor is here as well. Here, standing. Uh, and if we can please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, if you're able. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hoorah. Okay. So, <laughs> welcome to what is a, a busy agenda uh, as we close out the year and head into the holidays. Uh, you know, once again, as with kind of all of our, our time, uh, we are glad to be here. Hope everyone is healthy, safe, and happy. Uh, as we begin our meeting, as we do in most meetings, we'll begin with public comment. Uh, for folks who are interested in commenting, uh, I would ask that you, uh, if you find the participant, you have the ability to raise your hand by clicking on the button. Uh, if you do so, we're able to call you, uh, at which time uh, you will be given three minutes. I would ask that you uh, state your name and address during that th before the three minutes, uh, at which time uh, we'll be able to, uh, to have you speak. If you are on the phone and unable to uh, suppress the button, I uh, will go through all the phone calls as well uh, and give people on the phone the opportunity uh, to speak as well. And if you cannot find the button, uh, just for clarity, uh, I will look if anyone has uh, their, uh, their camera on and see if I can identify people who are like waving their hand or doing something to, to let me know that you want to speak. Uh, that being the case, uh, the first person that I see who has raised their hand uh, is Sandy Fox. Sandy, if you want to unmute yourself, uh, state your name and address. You have three minutes uh, after that to speak. Thank you, Jay. This is Sandy Fox at uh, 38 Holland Road. My comment is actually, well, a comment and a question, and I know you don't always answer questions, but I hope you will in this case. My comment is that I really think it's important to have transparency as much as possible in this process. And I am very interested in knowing what the special uh, council meeting process will be, if there will be discussion before the vote, after the vote, uh, a statement, if there will be a vote taken before the meeting and then just uh, announced at the meeting, um, if you could answer those questions, I'd be very appreciative. Thank you. You are welcome. Uh, and as that is kind of a point of clarity and something I was going to mention at the end, I have no problem kind of bringing it up at this time. Uh, for Just for a bit of clarity, uh, it is a special session for the purposes of that vote, which means that there won't be a vote beforehand. Uh, we will open it, allow public comment, st standard meeting public comment, followed by a motion, a second to the motion, uh, then it opens for discussion. Uh, it's up to council as to the amount of discussion. I cannot tell them what they, what they will or will not discuss. Uh, after discussion is completed, uh, there will be a roll call vote uh, for the vote itself, at which time once the roll call vote is concluded, that is the vote and there'll be a motion most likely to adjourn. Uh, so that would be the, the process. Uh, it's a very good question and, and certainly uh, your point of transparency, um, I think, you know, I've never seen quite a transparent process as this one in terms of everything being posted, everything being available, um, irrespective of, of what side you may find yourself on on the issue. So I appreciate your comment. Uh, I'm going to move forward uh, to the next uh, public comment, which is uh, Susan Sterrett. Again, if you can change your name, address, and uh, the time is yours, Susan. Thank you. My name is Susan Sterrett. Uh, I reside at 1903 Hampstead Drive. I'm going to set my timer now so that I don't go over. Okay, and I'd like to share my screen. Let 
Okay. <clears throat> My comment is occasioned uh, by something that I, I saw in the new local newspaper. Um, last Tuesday, there were two, uh, maybe more, but there were at least two uh, pieces about the Churchill vote. And the second one that's listed here um, is it's by Tony LaRusso of the Trib Live, and he really hasn't reported on this story before. Oh, I'm sorry, you can't read this. I'll have to read it to you. But he has an inaccurate comment in the news story. I believe it's inaccurate, and I want to make sure that it gets corrected. Uh, it says, borough officials have previously said that the developer's conditional use application for the project must be approved if it meets the borough zoning requirements, unless those who object can provide evidence that it would be detrimental to public health safety or the community's gen general welfare. Um, now that, that uh, he doesn't say, he doesn't quote anybody, he doesn't say who said it or where it was said, um, but I just wanna compare it with the statement that actually was said by, um, by Gavin Robb, uh, who's a borough official. It's important for the public to understand what conditional use means. A conditional use is only permitted where the applicant can establish compliance with all the various criteria in the ordinance, as well as sort of the general criteria that such a use is not detrimental to health, safety, and welfare of the community. And he goes on to explain the parts of the code that that, refers, that phrase refers to in more detail. Um, so I feel that, I'm really sorry this isn't very readable. Um, so I'll read it to you. So someone is spreading, I feel, uh, something between propaganda and misinformation. Maybe misinformation is a little too strong. Um, so that's what I wanted to, to make a comment on. Uh, I just wonder, it's an odd, odd coincidence that the misstatement is basically what the Churchill Creek Project has been trying to convince council members of, which is why I'm talking to you about it by selective quoting out of context. Or, or not quoting and just paraphrasing. So I just wanna point out some important distinctions I hope that the council members keep in mind. Um, and that is that before compliance has been shown um, versus after compliance has been shown, that distinction. So before any burden at all is switched away from the applicant towards anyone else, the applicant has to show compliance with the zoning code, all the relevant sections of articles four and five. So I would, ask you to ask, where is the item by item listing of all the sections of the code? I gave each a checklist in my, um, in my uh, exhibits. Um, and if they haven't done that, then they haven't even made the effort to show compliance with the zoning code. The other one is, um, is specific as opposed to unspecified, okay? As, as, as you know, gonna... yeah, it, it is your time. I, I, will, I will make a comment simply to say that, that quotes from the press, you know, I'm, I'm not surprised that they would get something wrong. Uh, or right for that matter, because it's the press. And someone once told me the press is neither your friend or your enemy. They've got their own agendas, just like everybody else. Yeah. So okay. I, so, um, so I, I can't. I can't. I've got to move forward, Susan. Yeah, I'll just. It. I'll give the slides of what I was going to show you, but that's if that's okay. Thank that's you. That's absolutely fine. You can submit them to us, and I will certainly uh, review all of them as, as I have all your your submis Thank submittals. You. So I Bye. It. Thank um, you. Moving forward, we're going to go to uh, looks like Ken. Ken is next. Ken Balki. Ken, you are muted, so I, I don't know, but I'm guessing you were saying your name at that time. Ken Balke, 2007 Hampstead Drive. And my comment, I'm actually trying to make a comment that I tried to make last week at the workshop. It wasn't anybody's fault, but when you went through items three and four on the committee reports, it went so quick and I sort of fumbled trying to get, so my hand didn't come up just as you were saying, we're going to item five. So I kept my hand up all through five, and then, then we went on to six. I said, okay, I'm taking it down. <laughs> it's, uh, he, he didn't see it. And, but uh, Mr. Graziani did mention it later, but I didn't want to interrupt the meeting. But so my comments here, uh, I was trying to hope all the other residents were done, but um, it's for the tree committee. It's not just my individual here. So I'm actually asking permission if I need... 30 seconds passed, I appreciate it. Understood as, as a committee as a committee statement, that's fine. Okay, they, they, we couldn't get in last week. Um, the, just a couple items here. The first one is that over the last several weeks, more issues have been brought to my attention about trees that are getting fungus, uh, both oak trees where there is sort of a mushroom 
um, covering at the base of the tree. In fact, I got a picture of one that I put in the borough, the forthcoming borough newsletter. And then another neighbor approached me that their leaves just dried up and died off all of a sudden off a maple tree. <clears throat> so I've had an arborist come in and did soil samples on uh, a tree on our own property that had an issue as well as the other. And apparently uh, it can be corrected if there's an injection into the root system and the bark is treated, it can recover the tree. The arborist said that if it's untreated, <clears throat> the tree will die within about three years. My concern is I'm, I've walked through other parts of the, our plan and I've noticed on other trees. And the question will be, well, our, the reason I'm bringing it up is that right now our ordinance is set that if a tree dies, um, the borough can take action with the property owner to take care of that declined tree. But we may wanna look at us taking a proactive approach to approach homeowners to really encourage them to get the treatment, which is only a few hundred dollars versus five or 10 times that cost to remove the tree when it dies. Plus we don't wanna lose the tree. So, but um, I'll be working with our tree committee and continue with the arborists of what can be done and what can we do proactively to inform residents. I have it in the newsletter, but I, I think it warrants uh, saying that, well, we hope the residents do it. Uh, hope's not a strategy. <laughs> I think that we should have a more defined approach and inventory all the trees throughout all of the streets that we have. And that's why um, uh, the, the recommendation of Natalie Boyston joined the tree committee. She brings some experience and will help. I know you're not voting on it now until January on all the other appointments, but we really can use that help. And I think we can put a plan to address that. The other end I had is that during the session last week, uh, concern was brought up that, hey, the last leaf pickup was last Tuesday. Can we do another one? And I was concerned about statements. People said, well, all the leaves are down. That's not true. If you, there are certain trees, particularly some oak trees, they'll hold leaves well in the winter. And the homeowners that have those trees, they, they know about that. And they're cleaning those leaves up usually in the spring rather than now. And I think though that the borough council did right to make, made the right decision last week. Uh, to stay with the plan you had for it is right now. And for those of us, I have leaves to still pick up. I'll just compost them. But um, the concern, if you start pushing that leaf pickup a couple more weeks out, then you get into the risk of a snowstorm coming when you have the pickup, and it's an absolute mess. So um, it, it's just the, the, the challenge we have. And I don't know if folks realize that everybody said, oh, I loved all that warm weather in October where it was seven degrees per day above normal. That weather caused us to have the most, um, a, a fall with no leaf color whatsoever. It was one of the poorest in my lifetime. And so that warm weather changed that. And I'm also trying to find out this fungus that's applying, that's starting to show up on a number of trees or near a number of trees. Is this related to the changing climate as well too. And then finally, my last comment is I wanted to publicly acknowledge Kathy Rayborn, who chairs the Penn Hills Shade Tree Commission. Um, she said she was gonna help me get some vines off those hemlocks at Bullock Pens. And here she showed up with 12 friends. They had pruning poles, chainsaws, and it ended up, I, I way underestimated how hard that job was, but we got 95% of the vines out of the trees and they're restored and, and they're really nice. But I wanted to just acknowledge um, the, the positive relationship with another borough here. And, uh, and that's actually, by look, I reflect on the past year, it's been building relationships with a number of organizations, both here locally and beyond. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you for, for the report from the tree committee. We certainly appreciate the work that you are doing. Sorry that wasn't uh, last week and able to hear you. I apologize. It's okay not identifying the tree committee at that time. Uh, we're gonna move forward to uh, Kathy Bordner. My name is Kathy Bordner. I live at 1926 Hampstead Drive. And I would just like to reinforce what uh, Dr. Susan Sterrett said about uh, the, the borough should be responsible about correcting that uh, misstatement in the, uh, I think it was the trip live. 
Uh, and I understand what uh, Councilman Dorn saying, you know, the press says stuff, but we're all responsible that when they print something that's not accurate, that we we are responsible for. It is a point, it's important for us to contact them to make the correction. And so I think that you are the borough government, you represent me and you represent all the people who are attending and uh, you should be responsible. I think uh, Gavin Robb should be responsible to contact that reporter and issue a correct statement and ask that that is published and uh, so that the correct information gets out there. People all over this state and this region are watching this issue. And it's important that correct information is given and when incorrect information is given, that it gets corrected so that people know what the process is and uh, what to expect. Thank you very much. Thank you, I appreciate your comment. I, I will say that while I, while I appreciate the comment, uh, really the correcting the press in terms of statements that are not attributed to any individual, not attributed specifically to, to the council itself. There have been incorrect statements made kind of all over the place, quite frankly, uh, and it's not the role of council necessarily to direct our, our solicitor to correct incorrect state press statements that are not attributed to, to the borough or to individuals on council. Um, but I do appreciate your comment. Uh, I'm gonna move forward now. Uh, and next up, I believe is uh, Kate Kerrigan Hill, if I'm still in order. Probably. Hi, um, my name's Kate Kerrigan Hill. I live at 1441 Beulah Road and I had forgotten that this meeting was this evening. So I am winging this, but what I wanna say is we had a <clears throat> small protest last week, the week before, and I was so impressed with the number of people that came, the number of people that stayed, the people that came from outside of Churchill. And after most of us found out about this in April, late March, early April, I am so proud of what we've accomplished, what we've done, who we are, the friendships we've made, the um, strength we show, the passion we remember to um, carry forth every time we're, we're fighting this. And what I find sad is that I think of what a formidable force we could all be if we were all pulling together. And I find it so interesting and discouraging that this large group of Churchill residents continue to fight this with the hope and the expectation that, that council will listen to us and the fear that council will not. That doesn't mean we go away. That just means we fight stronger. And I really believe that if we had been fighting together, all of us in this borough for the same cause, the same reason, with the same goals for this community, I really believe that we would be a powerhouse and certainly my hope for the 21st, I mean, it's, it's apparent what all of us want, what all of us need, but we certainly hope that you will remember that we expect that you will look out for the health, safety, and welfare of all of us. If there's any council member still that wants to hear anything from a resident, I have offered this. I have emailed some council members. I have left messages for some. I do not take the position that, um, that nothing should go up there. I live right across the street from it, and I believe that that land needs to be developed. I take a very moderate approach with what it needs to be developed with, and I am available. If anyone is questioning your position on council, if anyone wants to talk to a resident, I am always available. I'm aware that you cannot tell me how you think or what you how you plan to vote, but I really believe that this is the time that you need to hear from individual residents because we have so much at stake in this, and I would hate to see this borough disappear. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. I I will say that that uh, council is definitely listening to. Uh, all of the residents, there's been a lot of different comments that have come in, a lot of material that has come in from the residents themselves. Uh, and we certainly take everyone's voice seriously, um, irrespective of where they stand on, on an issue as, as complex as that. Uh, so I appreciate your comment and I appreciate your offer. Um, I'm gonna 
tough spot kind of in deliberation to kind of talk to people individually at this point. Um, but I appreciate your offer. I, I really do. And I know that that people have put a lot of heart and soul into this, no matter where uh, people are or where this lands. Um, and I respect that. And I respect the work that, that people have put in. So I can speak for myself on that. Uh, I'm looking to see if there are any other uh, public comments. I'm looking for the raised hands first. This is my magic dance around the room in this Hollywood squares. Uh, I don't see any additional raised hands there. Uh, looking to see if I have any additional raised hands on camera. Uh, if you're on camera and you can't figure out where the where the button is, feel free to, to wave and I will call on you. Uh, looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. Uh, not seeing any there. If anyone has called in uh, and would like to, to speak, uh, you can feel free to unmute at this time. Um, and if I see you unmute, I can call on you as well. So I'll give an extra second why people kind of make their decision on that. I just, I like to make sure that the time is here for folks to have the opportunity to speak. I'm stalling for time so people can look. Uh, okay. I don't want to make that same mistake again, Ken. I'm, I'm trying to make sure that, that I'm looking. Uh, all right, I think that takes us through uh, public comment. Um, this is going to move us into uh, the ordinary items to be accepted by motion, uh, beginning with minutes. I forgot to give you minutes. You're welcome. Uh, Mr. President, I move to accept the meeting. Oh, thank you. Mr. President, I move to accept the meeting minutes from the Monday, November 1st, 2021 workshop council meeting and Monday, November 8th, 2021 regular council meeting. Second. Thank you, thank you Matt. Thank you, Diane, for the, for the motion. Uh, is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And the minutes are accepted without opposition. Moving on to the mayor's report, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> As reported to me, I wish to inform council there are no unusual events and no, or no serious crimes during the month of November 2021. <clears throat> Our officers responded to 748 calls of service, 9,081 year to date, for services resulting in 10 arrests. The department's five police vehicles logged 4,718 miles in the past month. Chief Ron Ackerley has reported that the total amount of marriage of serial fines collected for the month of November has not been received at the writing at this writing. <clears throat> the chief would like to remind residents that now the holiday rush is in full swing. There are a few safety tips to be mindful of when shopping online or a local store. When online, be sure not to fall victim to phishing or similar, similar fraudulent scams. Do not click on leaks, links that are unfamiliar that take you directly to a retail website. Instead, type out the retailer's webpage address manually or Google search it first. Scammers are quite skilled these days and have developed lookalike websites that mirror the retailer's authentic site. When checking out online, ensure that your webpage is, sec is a secure checkout. This can be done by viewing the webpage address at the top of the page, which should display the HTTPS at the beginning. The S is confirming that the transaction is in fact secure and protected. When at a local storefront, it's important to know that thieves are often paying close attention and seeking opportunities to steal, particularly this time of the year when the opportunity presents itself. Be mindful not to leave your car unlocked in any parking lots or anywhere for that matter. Also be mindful not to leave valuables and or newly purchased items in clear view inside your vehicle. This is an invitation for theft. Ladies should never leave their purses or handbags unintended in shopping carts and never out of sight. It only takes a thief a few seconds to walk off with. When walking, make sure that your purse or handbag is snug against your body with one hand having a firm grip on the bag. This will usually deter thieves from attempting to steal your purse. Uh, do not send anyone requests for gift cards of any type of payments. The, these are scammers who will prey on you. From the entire police department, the chief would like to extend their best, their wishes for a happy, healthy, and safe holiday. Details and other related statistics concerning the police department 
during the month of November 2021 are reported on the attached police department reports. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I pre appreciate the reading of the report. Uh, at this time, I'd accept a motion to accept the mayor's report. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Collins. Is there second. A second. Thank you, Matt. Quick second in the West. Uh, is there any discussion on the report? Uh, other than to say that uh, the holidays are a happy time, but it can be a difficult time. So keep, keep your wits about you. Uh, any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And the mayor's report is accepted without opposition. This moves us on to the treasurer's report and the uh, bills. Uh, Mr. President, I move to accept the treasurer's report for the month ending November 30th, 2021. Thank you. Uh, is there a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, any discussion on the treasurer's report? Yes, Mr. President. I just want to point out that uh, our cash balance for all accounts is at two million one hundred forty-seven seven. Cents. And our general fund projected revenues are 115% of the adopted budget in 2021. The projected expenditures are 100, like 4 3% of the adopted budget. Duly noted. Uh, any additional discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And the treasurer's report is again accepted without opposition. This moves us on to the uh, motion of paying the bills. Okay, Mr. President, I move that we direct the finance officer to pay the bills for the borough of Churchill approved since November 8th, 2020. Thank you. Is second. There a second? I'm telling you the quickest second in the West, no doubt about it. Uh, any discussion? Uh, as a matter of course, in discussion, anytime we have a bill over the amount of 15000 we do read that publicly, even though it is posted now publicly along with all of the bills. Uh, in this particular month, as we close out the year, we get a little bit more on the, on the list, it, it appears. Uh, so you get to hear my quick reading to go through uh, the numbers that we have here. Uh, track is contracting. This is for the Collins Pump uh, Road Pump Station project. This is a GROW grant reimbursed in the amount of $253,969.20. So like construction, uh, again, this is uh, a excavation for the contract in Graham Boulevard Sewer Project. The amount of $169,419.12. Uh, state Pipe Services. Uh, this is the, the CCTV camera work uh, for storm and sewers and uh, sanitary sewers. The amount of $60,130.24. A Shorty Family Auto Group. Uh, this is the purchasing and outfitting of a new police uh, vehicle. We said it for Kevin on his, on his, last, his last meeting with us, which I have sad to say. Uh, nonetheless, uh, it is in the amount of uh, uh, $49,963.38. Uh, Jet Jack, which again is part of this, the sewer sanitary, uh, the lining, uh, again has a uh, grant, re the $21,500 or $642.96 is reimbursable. The total amount of it, though, is $47,855.01. Uh, Alcasan, which again is our quarterly uh, sanitary sewer treatment cost. Uh, this is through October in the amount of $38,756.16. Uh, Sims, and I'm not going to attempt that last one. Uh, Kim Sims, Denise, uh, go with that. Uh, that is that. But what's more important is that she is our amazing court reporter uh, who has really worked uh, tirelessly, I want to say <laughs> that. Um, but I would point out uh, that it is in the amount of $30,396.25. Uh, it does cost a lot. Uh, to have a court reporter here for that that long amount of time to make sure that everyone's voice is heard and that we are uh, putting all of that in the record. Uh, so it is, it is a $30,000 bill to, the, to, to our folks here. Uh, but half of that, the good news is reimbursed by Hillwood. Uh, then we've got uh, Gateway Engineers, the amount of $24,834.50. Uh, again, $2,202 uh, is Hillwood reimbursed. Uh, a Liberoni, uh, for the paving in the amount of $21,857.81. Uh, Bigliotti Landscaping Construction. Uh, this is our DP, our, our public works uh, for November in the amount of $17,284.34. Uh, Tucker Arnsberg, uh, which is the guy sitting over there, our solicitor, and all the good work that they've been doing. See the kindness today. Uh, it's got to be the holidays. It's uh, $16,033.17. Uh, and then we have uh, the MRM, the, the Trust Work Comp Fund, uh, for our quarterly workman's comp insurance payment of $15,842.58. Uh, 
Uh, that takes us through a public reading of all the bills over the amount of 15,000. Is there any other discussion pertaining to the bills? Uh, hearing no other discussion, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And the finance officer will be directed then to pay the bills without opposition. Uh, this moves us on to a motion to approve uh, the budget. I would ask for a reading of the budget followed by, by the motion itself. Well, Mr. President, uh, I'd like to read the general fund budget. General fund total of revenues are projected at $3,125,877.35. It begins with the beginning fund balance of five hundred sixty-eight thousand nine hundred five dollars and seventy-eight cents. Real estate taxes for revenue one million nine hundred twenty-one thousand seven hundred fifty-eight dollars. Other taxes one hundred seventy-two thousand two hundred dollars. Act five eleven taxes six hundred thirty-seven thousand six hundred thirty-seven thousand dollars. Grants and contributions two thousand dollars. Restricted revenue two hundred sixty-five thousand eight hundred sixty-nine dollars. Other revenue, one hundred twenty-seven thousand fifty dollars, for a total of three million one hundred twenty-five thousand eight hundred seventy-seven dollars and fifty-nine cents. Projected expenditures for twenty twenty-two: total of three million two hundred one thousand forty-two dollars. General government six hundred sixty-two dollars and six hundred sixty-two thousand dollars five hundred thirty-eight. Public works nine hundred eighteen thousand nine hundred sixty-three dollars. Storm sewers, eighty-three thousand. Police, one million four hundred twenty-one thousand five hundred forty-eight dollars. Fire, sixty-five thousand nine hundred dollars. Foreign fire pass, fifteen thousand dollars. Contributions, twenty-nine thousand three hundred dollars. Required insurance and employer obligation, other expenses. Required insurance and employer obligations. Uh, they are in. There are other budgets that are included in this, and they are available. On the website, but the other expenditures are four thousand eight hundred dollars, for total expenditures of three million two hundred one thousand forty two dollars, which will so projected will have a projected <coughs> ending fund balance of four hundred ninety two thousand seven hundred forty one dollars and fifteen cents, which will be fifteen point four two percent of the budget, which is in our general fund. Put aside for Thank you, Kevin. At this time, I'd entertain. Is that motion? Okay, Mr. President, I move to approve the adoption of the Memorial Church. <laughs> Thank you. Is there a second? Okay. Oh, man. Uh, any discussion on the budget? I just want to add that there are other budgets involved in this budget that are available. Uh, there's a sewer budget, <laughs> road and highway budget. This one pertains mostly to tax revenue, which we go forward to our next resolution. And, and for clarity, those other budgets are available to the public online. Uh, I would take a minute to, to thank uh, both the Finance Committee along with Krista <laughs> and Alex uh, and, and everyone who's worked on this budget because I think not only have, have you all done a, a fantastic job, but one of the things that we're talking about is making sure that the way in which we're capturing and, and cost accounting for, for the expenses are done correctly. Uh, and in a way that put that position us correctly moving forward. And so when Kevin speaks to uh, the other budgets which are available to you, um, it is for the purposes of making sure that, that what we are doing is done in the correct way. Full transparency, it's a lot of detail that a finance officer, Mr. has put forth. So it's, uh, it's a lot of detail. It's much uh, appreciated. Uh, any other discussion on the budget? Hearing none, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And the budget is approved without opposition. This will move us on to number eight. Okay, Mr. President, uh, moving the budget, I now want to move to approve resolution 4527 of the Fall of setting the 2022 real estate tax rate at $8 being equivalent to the rate of 80 cents on each $100 evaluation of property as fixed on the last <laughs> Second. Thank you. Didn't have to call for the second because I've got the quickest second in, in the land. Uh, any discussion on this? No, just that I'm glad that the 
much is not increased. That, that's a point worth discussing, by the way. Yeah, we want to skip a budget in which we don't we don't increase the millage without stating the fact that we are not increasing the millage. Okay. Uh, any other discussion on, on the budget? Just for a point of clarification for those of us that are new, i.e. me, is this something we have to restate each year? I'm sorry, is it something that we need to do that we restate the millage each year? Yes. 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 Every year when we set the budget, we set the millage. It, it's it's an annual process. Okay. Even if it stays the same. Yep. Thank you. Absolutely. Not a worry. Uh, any other discussion on the millage? Goes back to my good job for the folks who, who worked on our budget again. I'll just give the same kudos out again. Uh, because you don't you don't end up with maintaining your millage if you don't have folks who are working on it. So thank you again. Uh, if there's no other discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And the millage is set again at eight mil without opposition, uh, keeping it where it was without any increase. Uh, this moves us on uh, to number nine. Mr. President, I move that we approve resolution 4528, adopting the 2022 Borough of Churchill fee schedule, enumerating the various fees charged for services by the borough. Second. Thank you. I've got an automatic second. I like that. Uh, any any discussion of, of this at all? Again, this is the setting of our, of our annual kind of uh, fees that come out throughout the borough. I don't know if there's any in particular that we haven't already discussed, so I don't know if there's anything that needs to be discussed further. Okay, none. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And again, the motion passes to set the, the fee schedule without opposition. Uh, moving on to number 10. Uh, Mr. President, I move to approve resolution 4529, enumerating the 2022 non-union and union borough staff salary resolution. Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? I think there, there is the opportunity for folks to read a uh, brief description. It, it's available to you right there in front of you. Um, and Mr. President, we do post the draft resolutions before the meeting. So if the public is familiar with the ECARD 360 site where they find the agenda and meeting minutes, they can find the draft resolutions. We try to get those posted about the same time we post the agenda. Thank you, Mr. Manager. I appreciate that. Again, just pointing out that this is posted prior to the meeting so people have the opportunity to read any draft resolution uh, before we uh, make any discussion or, or any vote on, on the matter. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And number 10, the, the sellers are set without uh, opposition. <clears throat> Moving on to number 11. Mr. President, I move to approve resolution 4530 of the Borough of Churchill, approving a Borough of Churchill fund balance policy. Second. Thank you. Kind of like that rule. It's smooth. Uh, Thank you. Is there any discussion on the fund balance policy? And we've had this conversation previously about a fund balance policy, so I don't think there's much that we need to discuss. Uh, so unless there is any other discussion, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And the fund balance policy is accepted without opposition. Uh, moving on to number 12. Uh, Mr. President, I vote to approve, or I move to approve, sorry, the resolution 4531, implementing a mandatory vaccination policy for all borough employees and new hires. Thank you. Second. Second. You, you, you're still too slow, Norman, for Matt. Oh, Matt. Gee, okay. <laughs> Matt's on it. He, he's, he knows his role. He's killing it. He's killing it. <laughs> Appreciate that, Matt. Uh, is there any discussion on this? Uh, again, I think that we have previously discussed the idea that, that all, all persons uh, working in the borough should be vaccinated. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of comments by our public about can we open up and we're looking to open up in the new year. And there's been, I think there was an assumption by many that everyone in, in the borough was vaccinated um, and that was not the case. And so as we look at this and try to address this, one of the things that council is to take this seriously. And to make sure that all all staff that work for the borough. Are. Jay, I had a I had a question. Yes, should should it specify COVID vaccination, or is there going to be a broader vaccination policy? I stare slowly over at the solicitor right now because that's a wonderful question. Because when I read it, itself, it was, are we including? Actually, yeah, but I'm, 
I believe that the you know, the actual yes. language itself does specifically reference not only COVID but the types of vaccines required uh, by sort of brand name, for lack of a better uh, better lack of a better terminology. So if you, if you refer to the actual resolution itself, not the motion, um, you'll see that level of detail. Okay, great, thank you. Sure, but a, but a, but a good question. I appreciate that. <clears throat> Any other discussion on number twelve? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And number 12, the uh, mandatory vaccination policy is accepted without opposition. Uh, this moves us on to number 13. Mr. President, I make a motion to approve resolution 4532, approving the volunteer eligibility list for the Burroughs Act 172 of 2016 volunteer service local tax credit program per the Borough Code Chapter 276 Taxation Article uh, 11 Volunteer Service Credit Program. Thank you, is there a second? Second. Thank you, Norma. Can't second your own thing, Matt. <laughs> uh, is there any discussion on this? Uh, I would just point out that, you know, the, the folks who, uh, who are willing to put in the, the time and, and really kind of work for us on a volunteer basis, we're trying to find ways to assist them as well. Uh, and this is one of those ways. And uh, we both appreciate the work that they do um, day in and day out. Every time you hear that kind of siren go off, you know, recognize that there's somebody who's leaving their house to help somebody and potentially put themselves in harm's way. Uh, is there any other discussion on the matter? Hearing none, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And the motion, motion passes without opposition. This moves us on to number 14. Mr. President, I motion to approve Churchill Borough Ordinance 761, establishing elected official salaries starting in 2024. Thank you. Is there a second? second. Why even ask? I say, why even ask? Uh, any discussion? This was one again that we had spoken about a few times, uh, and this is really establishing for 2024 for uh, what is the state allowed. Uh, Kind of stipend for lack of a better way of saying it uh, and that would take effect actually when i am off council just, just to point that out it's kind of a side note for those of you there we go uh any other discussion <coughs> hearing none all in favor aye. Aye. aye any opposition all right and the motion passes without opposition uh, that gets us through kind of the uh the, the big kind of sloth of, of action items, um, a few kind of uh, discussion items uh, that seem to be on the table. Uh, one, before we get to this, I just want to restate uh, what was said before, uh, that on the 21st, 6 o'clock, we have the, the, pu the public meeting, special meeting with regard to the vote uh, on, these, on the conditional use. Uh, again, the format for that will be the same kind of format. Uh, what will happen again is that we will open the meeting, allow for public comment. Following public comment, I will entertain a motion. Once the motion is seconded, or if the motion is seconded, I should not make such assumptions. Uh, council will have the opportunity for discussion. Following discussion, there will be a vote on the issue and then an adjournment uh, unless something else pops up uh, that I'm unaware of. Um, outside of that, um, I would just point out to council that uh, we're heading into, this is the last, of course, uh, meeting of the year, uh, which means that uh, next year we'll be addressing uh, the reorg, uh, as you see in terms of discussion items, uh, that the reorg meeting will be uh, on January 3rd at 7 o'clock, uh, which brings me to another thing that I, I will talk about it at the very, very end of this. <clears throat> so um, I don't know if folks had uh, any questions on the reorg, but for folks, just so, so we, we know kind of how that runs, uh, when we start a reorganization meeting, uh, because there is not an elected uh, president or vice president, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm pausing. Yeah. Uh, just reminding when council speaking, make sure you speak directly into the mic uh, in front of you and that the light is on. Got you. I, I think I am. I'm just, I'm just checking. Uh, but uh, as, the, as the reorg meeting, uh, it will start, I will not be chairing the reorg meeting as there is no president at the beginning of a reorg meeting. Uh, the mayor will, at which time we will, we will swear folks in, council will vote on a President and Vice President, at that time, the President uh, will, will chair the meeting moving forward. 
Um, outside of that, uh, unless is, is there any other uh, reports or anything that, that people need to report, uh, either out of committee that wasn't discussed at the at the workshop, uh, before I kind of move move forward. Hey, Mr. President, I understand that some of the uh, people online weren't able to hear my comments about the budget. Um, I'd just like to tell them that the the full budget and the treasurer's report are on the uh, the website. Uh, so again, I apologize that I didn't speak clearly. <coughs> Uh, the, I don't know if I if you want to reread it or not. I, I don't think that's necessary. No, I, I don't think it's necessary to reread as it is available online as well. <clears throat> so my, you know, I apologize for, for not uh, identifying uh, that the folks were unable to hear. Uh, Mr. Collins, uh, I'll take the hit on that. Uh, but generally, uh, it was a reading of the budget with the understanding uh, that in one of the items that we have uh, other budgets, in fact, uh, that are available online. And we did so, as you heard from me, uh, to ensure that the way that the budget is functioned is done correctly. Um, and I really appreciate one more time, since I have the opportunity to say it again, uh, the committee and Krista and Alex's work on, on this because uh, it can't be understated. Uh, so uh, that being the case, I'm going to do the old school version of this, uh, which, which some of you may or may not know, which is the kind of around the table uh, at the end of uh, meetings, giving the opportunity uh, for individuals to make any comments off council. Uh, along with uh, staff and, and, and other folks. Um, and so I will first ask if, uh, if our borough engineer has any comments tonight. Yeah, I can provide just a quick update. Um, the one big project that we've had going on this year, the pump station replacement project, the contractor is essentially complete with all construction there uh, with installation of the sewer and ultimately um, all sewage is now flowing through that gravity line and our pump station is no longer pumping sewage. Um, the demo of that pump station should be uh, being performed here this week and we'll let everybody know so that they can all uh, enjoy that. Um, but, but yeah, so that should be coming to a close. And then the other quick item, just the Churchill paving program, we had one outstanding item and they were able to complete the berm paving for that um, in the in the month of November. That's all for me. Thank you. I'll simply say when I was a kid, there used to be a book that talked about feelings of the cold pricklies and the warm fuzzies. And I will simply say that your statement of the of the pump station gives me the warm fuzzies. It makes me nice and happy to, to know that we have, we have finally got to that point. Uh, I will move forward. Uh, that and Ralph, any comments from either uh, Public Works or Fire? Uh, the only thing I have under Public Works is I'm so happy to see that the pump station's now <laughs> uh, the job's completed. That's definitely for sure. Uh, the other thing I have is that uh, the fire department's been very busy. We're going to have a uh, really um, large number of calls this year. We're going to probably hit 400 calls this year, which is the first time in the history of the fire department uh, ever hitting that amount of calls. So the fire department's been really busy. Uh, just over the weekend, we had uh, from Friday to Sunday, we had nine calls. So we've been really busy. So I wish everybody could take time, support the fire department. Really appreciate it. And happy holidays to everybody. And thank you. Thank you, Ralph. And I, I would just second that that space of uh, there are a number of ways to support the fire department. I would hope that all of our residents would do so. I know we have an active community, uh, but quite frankly, uh, our volunteer fire department needs needs support in every way that you can. Uh, and I'm not, you know, I'm not pitching for them, although I'm pitching for them, uh, you know, both in a financial space and also in a, in a physical space. If you're able to, to volunteer, uh, I'm sure Ralph would be happy to talk with you about it. Uh, and if you're able to kind of pitch in, I'm sure he'd be happy to, uh, to receive anything that you can do. So that's my pitch of, of the holiday for you, Ralph, because I know the work that you guys are all doing and uh, we all really, really appreciate it. Uh, Thank you, Jim. Uh, my, my pleasure. Uh, Krista, any comments for you with all the hard work that you have put into this? Well, actually, I wanted to thank uh, the chief of police, Ralph and Alex and the finance committee. They've been incredibly patient this past year as I pushed forward with a more detailed budget goal um, for transparency. And everyone's been super patient and has provided me all the information necessary for us to complete the document and put this forward. Uh, so I thank them all and I thank them for their patience. Um, and I'm really proud of what we were able to put together. So thanks, guys. We are, we are proud of you, if I can just say that now. Uh, 
Uh, Alex, sir. Thanks, Mr. President. Uh, this is my first full calendar year here in Churchill, and I'm, I'm forever grateful for the opportunity to serve here. I got great staff to work with. Krista and Ralph are unbelievable, and the chief as well. Um, Kevin, I'm really going to miss you. Um, Kevin's like Bob Hope. He's always keeping the troops happy. And he'll come into the borough building with uh, a dozen donuts, and that really makes me happy. I'm going to miss that. Uh, Norma, I really appreciate your service. Um, we all stand on the shoulders of those who have come before us. And certainly the two new council members who will be joining the council in January have some big shoes to fill. And um, I'm grateful for their service and thankful that we're able to pass the budget tonight with a lot of work. Uh, I know we didn't get a chance to do as much uh, public discussion of the budget because we had a, another topic to talk a lot about this year. But hopefully in years to come, we'll look to involve our citizens more in budget formation and help them better understand um, the things we're trying to achieve with the resources that are ultimately theirs. And, and how we seek to steward those resources. So very thankful to be working in, Chir in Churchill and very grateful, thank you. I have to have you, of course. Um, Mr. Solicitor, the floor is yours. I got uh, one question. Nothing for me, it's for Mr. President. Thanks. For those of you who didn't get that joke, watch, watch Marshall soccer. <laughs> um, move, moving forward, Mr. Mayor. President, um, my comments would be, uh, first of all, I appreciate all the comments from other residents who uh, have been joining the meetings, not only tonight, but throughout uh, this whole process. Uh, you know, all the comments that come in are, are taken very seriously, are discussed by council, and, uh, you know, everyone is always thinking about the best we can do for the borough. Uh, I wanted to thank uh, Ken for, his, you know, the comment with the trees, you know, those vines in the trees. There's a, another section in the borough that I'm concerned about getting uh, vines out of the tree over near the common gardens and, and i was glad to hear that you were able to get some volunteers to help you out with that so anybody that's also listening um you know if you wanted to come out and volunteer you know give me a, give me a call contact me and i'll meet you over there we can yank some of those vines out of a beautiful oak tree over on that property you know i cut them but they need to be pulled out now so i, I was happy to hear that you had those volunteers um and alex and krista for putting that budget I know the finance committee worked on that budget, but when you see the completed booklet that was printed out, it just makes it so easy to understand where, where all the line items are going and, and, the, and the charts and the way it's just all put out. I mean, I, I told Chris, I just, uh, for someone who has a hard time reading through that stuff, it made it very easy to understand the budget. And I appreciate all the time and effort that was put into that. And, and last, uh, let me see, not last, but anyway, um, it, with Kevin leaving, I, I wanted to say, you know, working with Kevin and other members of the council has certainly been a, a learning experience for me, watching others, how they perform. So I picked that up from them, and I really appreciate Kevin, and, you know, for doing all he's done for the borough over the years. And Norma, uh, you know, we're losing Norma, too, and her relationship that she developed with the school district. You know, we're going to hope we can continue that in the upcoming years with the new council members. And, and last, I guess I'll just say, um, you know, hope everyone has a great holiday and, and stay safe. And we'll still be here in 2022. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it, Mr. Mayor. Uh, move our way around, around the table. I will start uh, with Adam. Sure, thanks, Jay. And I, I don't know what more to say that it hasn't already been said. So can I just second what everyone else has said? Uh, thanks to the to the firefighters, to um, Alex and Krista, all the work on the budget. Um, I, I think just, you know, most of all, you know, um, Kevin and Norma, it's been great serving with you on this council the last few years. Thanks for everything that you've done for us and for both the council and the borough, and you will be missed. So thank you. Thank you, Adam. Um, Matt, floor is yours. Sure, I would just, uh, you know, reiterate uh, what everyone else has said. I appreciate uh, Kevin and Norma, your service and, and serving with you. Um, you know, the, our new folks, uh, Brooke and Deb, have some shoes to fill, but I'm sure they will be up to the challenge. So we look forward to working with them in the new year. Uh, for all our residents, we appreciate the, the input. Uh, stay safe, enjoy the holiday season, and have a wonderful new year. Outstanding. Well, Valerie, the floor is yours. If you want it, I should Thank say you, Mr. President. Um, yeah. 
I want to thank all the borough staff for all their hard work. Um, and I know it's been quite a busy year. So I want to thank everybody. I also want to thank your um, thank our residents for all your dedication and your hard work to the borough. All of your comments are taken seriously. I also want to thank all my committee members for all your hard work on all the committees and making things happen. Um, Kevin and Norma, I'm going to echo what everybody else said. Uh, you will be greatly missed. It has been wonderful working with both of you. And a special thanks to Kevin for taking Adam and I under your wings in the finance committee. We really, really appreciate that. Um, and to everybody, happy holidays and stay safe. Vice President Mino will go to the half hour. Oh, and you can imagine I could take an hour, but I'm not going to do that. The uh, very first thing I want to say is that um, uh, some some of us did not experience the council uh, before COVID. And uh, uh, Kevin and Norma, I, I'm just so grateful that I had the opportunity to uh, work with you and know you and uh, understand the level of commitment that you made during your tenure uh, on this council. It is um, people like you that really make this council uh, special, and I think it is really special. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And if you think that we are not going to tap into your skills and your experience after you leave office, you're kidding yourself. Uh, that's the first thing. Uh, second thing is, I just want to say I live very near to this building and to the fire department, and I can tell you that it has been amazing to me how many times our, our people have been called out this year. Uh, I hear every siren, and I, I, it's impossible to, to, to me to understand how dedicated these people have to be to keep doing this, we, and, and it's volunteer. So please, when you, uh, when you get the message in the mail about supporting the fire department, take that very, very seriously. Uh, these folks really deserve our support. Um, I wanna say about the budget. Uh, again, I've been here for quite a while and this budget document and the work that went into it is really exceptional. I encourage all of you in the borough to go to the website and you know, understand what it is that our staff does and what this borough requires. Uh, it is an expensive proposition and I'm pleased that we didn't uh, have to raise taxes this year, uh, but it's due to the excellent management uh, of the revenues that we have. So thank you very much. And thank you to all of my colleagues for this year. Uh, I wish everybody a, a wonderful holiday, happy new year, and we'll hit the ground running. Thank you, Madam Vice President. Uh, I will go and then I will leave the floor to Norma and Kevin and you know, close off meeting if that's acceptable. Uh, so quickly, uh, a few things first on the Norma and Kevin front. Um, I, have, I have been on council since 2010. Um, I have seen a lot of different types of council members come and go on this, on this board and body. Uh, I am grateful to both of you not just for what you bring in terms of skills, but for what you brought in terms of your temperament and caring to the, to the actual council. What people need to understand, I think from what I've seen over the years and transition of different kinds of people on council, is that we are losing to people who care. You know, yes, each one of them brought very specific high level skills that are difficult to fill, but we're losing people who care about our community. Uh, you know, it happens. Uh, I will miss you both on a number of different levels. You know, Diane brought up kind of the time before COVID, right? Because it's a, it's a different feeling, right? To be able to hang out and have a conversation and talk to each other and, and get to know each other in, in that way. Um, and we had that opportunity as, as a council. So I wish you all the best. I agree with Diane. I don't think that getting off council gets you clean from us. Uh, you know, I know your skill sets. Um, they are outstanding. They are mostly lots of my weak points. So I really, really would love to, to be able to lean on you uh, as we move forward. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for all that you have given to, to all of Churchill uh, and to me specifically. Uh, to the residents of Churchill as we head into the new year and into the holiday season, thank you all. Uh, I don't care if you have been completely disgusted with the words I have spoken or if you think I'm the greatest president of council that has ever existed. Thank you. Uh, your words have value to me. 
They have value when they're, they're in disagreement with me. They have value when they're in agreement with me. I think one of the most amazing things about our communities we had in this holiday season is that even when we are in just fundamental disagreement, we do so in a way that is, that is respectful, that is orderly, uh, and we don't have the kind, of, the kind of commotion that we see in other residents. Um, and I appreciate everybody for that because I, it can't be understated um, just how great our residents are at your respective. Uh, to our staff, uh, I cannot say enough about how amazing you all are. Uh, again, I've been through several different borough managers, several different you know, assistant managers, several that I've been through this game. The only person who's been through the game longer is Ralph. So uh, <laughs> I've, I've only had one Ralph during this whole time. Uh, but I, I can't, I cannot tell you what an outstanding job you are doing both amidst the chaos amidst the intensity, uh, but also just your quality. So I just wanted to take a minute to give that, that specific thank you. Uh, and that goes to, you know, uh, our bro engineer and even our solicitor, uh, even with his, uh, I know, I know, man, even with that top, the problem we got, uh, speaking of COVID. Uh, having said that, I will relinquish my time and I'll go on for an hour. Uh, so I'll turn it over to either Norma or Kevin. You guys can decide and then uh, we'll adjourn after. I just have okay. a question. Oh, go ahead, Kevin. Okay. Um, Mr. President, rest of council, thank you for your comments. Okay. I'm sorry. Again, uh, thank you to the mayor and to the rest of the council for your comments, your kind comments. Um, it's been a interesting and very satisfying eight years. I've really enjoyed working with past council members and with past staff, Donna and Sandy, uh, with past key policemen. Um, but I, I really have enjoyed the experience of working with Gavin, with you, Denny, Denny Flynn, and uh, uh, Alex and Krista. I mean, I am, and I think, all the residents will be very appreciative of all that you do. I mean, we've, we've made some on a good basis, but because of the COVID, it's been very difficult. You've done a marvelous job, in the, especially in the budget process, and especially through this uh, process of, of dealing with the Hillwood development. Uh, you should be commended. So, and I, I thank you for all the, all the help and assistance. Um, Ralph, you and I, Thank you so much for helping me understand a lot of different things. And I am so grateful that this pump station is done with. So, and it's largely due because of your efforts. So I, uh, I appreciate it. And with that, um, I'll see you next week, obviously, but uh, uh, thank you and, and happy holidays. And I'm not going anywhere. So <laughs> thank you. I just have a thing. I just have a few words to say. I want to thank the residents for all of their, just their passion, their knowledge that they've shared over these past certainly few months. Um, I've gotten to know them in a way I, I don't think I would have otherwise. So thank you for that. And I, you know, I became, I joined council with some skepticism about elected officials. Um, you know, it's kind of old baggage about anyone elected to office has got to be corrupt. But I have never met people as honest and dedicated as the members of this council. I, I have been so impressed. Um, integrity, de dedication, um, it has been truly remarkable and a pleasure to work with all of you. So I, I thank you for changing my um, estimation of elected officials. Um, you've been just, you're just really great people and um, I think you serve us very well. So th thank you for all of that. And uh, I'll miss you, but I'll be around and I intend to drop into future meetings if I'm ever <laughs> uh, in person again, I hope so. Um, but thank, thank you all and um, happy, happy holidays and happy, happy new year. Thank, thank you both. Uh, before I entertain a motion to adjourn, just one other thing I, I did fail to say. Uh, I did also just want to make sure that all the police officers know uh, how much we support and, and appreciate their work. Uh, again, just like our volunteer firemen, when, uh, you know, we don't function without them. So I just wanted to, to make sure that that was said as well.
I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Slicer. And uh, we will be heading into uh, an executive session following this meeting um, for the quasi-judicial, thanks, thanks for the interpretation. Uh, way, way to close week on my part, let me just say that right now. Uh, but we will be heading into to an executive session for quasi-judicial uh, meeting. Uh, and with that being said, uh, at this time, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? I second. A game set match. Thank you all very much. We stand uh, and give uh, Kevin and the. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm for standing and giving Kevin an enormous round of applause. I, I get lost into the camera when I do that. I got good people here. With that, we adjourn.